In this video, we're going to tie a fly called the Prairie Dog and Pupa. This is a fly that I developed that is kind of just an update to the La Fontaine's Caddis Pupa. It's a little bit smaller, a little more compact, a little easier to tie, you can get the body a little more consistent, and it just uses a technique that's a little, little different and I think a little bit easier. So we're going to start off with the Daiichi 1120 curved hook. And the tungsten 2 millimeter 564 inch bead. You can also use a regular bead, but we'll use tungsten in this one today. And some Vivas olive thread. I'm using like a 12 watt here, but you can use 10, 12, 14, whatever. Whatever you want to use. So we're going to start our thread right in the middle of the shank of the hook. Then we're going to tie on some just really light hair's mask dubbing, extremely light. It's almost kind of white cream. And this is just going to be our our underbody. So it doesn't really need to be too fancy, nothing much. Then we're going to tie just a little bit past the halfway point of the hook. You don't want to crowd the head of the hook on this fly. You need to leave some room. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some Zelon. I'm using a light olive color for this, but you can use a regular olive color, green, tan, amber, whatever color you're trying to kind of imitate for your caddis pupa. Then I'm going to cut it, it comes in these strands, and I'm going to cut basically three different strands. I've got my three strands there. And I'm going to tie one in on the far side of the hook, which will be kind of your side of the camera. And I just let it hang there. Then I'm going to tie one right on top of the shank of the hook, kind of more on my near side. Then I'm going to tie one kind of near the bottom of the shank of the hook. And we're going to trim off all the fibers hanging off the head of the fly. Once you get a little bit more proficient with these, you can actually kind of just tie this all in one big clump, but for the video I'll do it in the three sections just because it's a little easier for people to learn how to tie the fly to manage it in three different pieces. Then you're going to take a bodkin or a comb and just kind of run through, just run through all those fibers. All we're doing is we're kind of breaking up those clumps and those strands and we want it to spread out and kind of envelop the entire radius of the hook. So you don't need to really go too crazy. Just tease it all out. Then you're going to take your fingers and just stroke it all back. You want to make sure there's no trapped fibers underneath the shank of the hook. So just stroke them out with your bodkin. And now we're going to just pull them back. And if you really get picky, you can kind of tease out the fibers and evenly distribute them uh, around the shank of the hook. And we're going to take a pair of hemostats. And I'm going to pull all these fibers back nice and tight all at the same time. And I'm going to get in there and crimp, crimp them with my hemostats. Now I want to crimp it about a hook shank's length off the basically from where I tied it in. So about the a hook shank's length. If you're not sure, go a little longer because then you can always burn the ends and make it smaller. So when I have it crimped, I'm just going to get in here with my scissors and I'm going to trim out all the, the ends. And what you'll have is just a few little butts there. Then you're going to take your lighter, burn all those ends. If you have a few straggling fibers, don't worry about it too much. We can get those out of there. Now, when I burned it, you can see it kind of burned in a little bit of a line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hemostats and I'm going to then pinch that perpendicular to what I just did, and I'm going to burn it again. This way, it's really going to melt it in a nice little fine tip there. And it's also going to just ensure that those aren't going to come undone. And like I said, if you have a few stragglers, I can see one right there. Just trim it out. We've got more than enough fibers in there to achieve the look we're going for. Now this is important. The next step is we're going to take 
our fingers and we're really just going to pull on that butt and what that's going to do is it's going to straighten the line all the fibers so pull nice and hard and then push it forward what you're going to get is just this nice little nice little bubble butt and that's what we're looking for that's where it gets its name the prairie dog and caddis now the next thing we're going to do is tie in the antenna and for that we're going to use some three or four or five pound Maxima Chameleon. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm using, I think, I'm using three pound here, but it can be any of those sizes. They all work fine. What we're going to do is just take our lighter and I'm just going to burn just a slight little ball on the tip of one of those Maxima fibers. You can see this Maxima fiber has a curve to it. We want that curve to follow the radius of the, the fly. And we're just going to tie that in. Now the reason I made that little ball, because if you don't do that, this Maxima slippery stuff and it just essentially will pull right out. So you want to leave yourself a little bit of a nub for your thread to kind of jam up against. That's all, all that's there for. Just enough to keep your piece of Maxima from, or your antenna essentially from flying off and coming off in the water. Okay, once you have those tied in, you can see the curve follows the fly. We're going to trim those just about a half a length of the shank of the hook past the butt. So you want it to hang past the butt just a little bit. That's all you're looking for. Just that. Just two little antenna and you can kind of kink them upwards a little bit just to get the look you're going for. Oh, let me kind of slid together there. There we go. I like to split them, splay them just like that. Now the last step is to dub the head. For that I'm going to use some dark hair's mask dubbing. And I like the spiky stuff for the head. Stuff that has some of the guard hairs in it. I like this to get nice and scraggly. That just kind of gives it a buggy caddisy look. But that's just my preference. And I also like to dub it relatively loose. So you can see I'm not really getting a nice tight dubbing ball. That's perfectly fine. I don't want a nice tight dubbing ball on this fly. Because what we're going to do is tease it all out here at the end. So if you dub that too tight, then you can't really tease anything out. So do it semi-loose. Then we're going to get in here at the whoopsie piece of Velcro. And be careful not to snag your butt. So what I do to avoid that usually is I put my finger there, but I kind of rushed into it that time. So tease out. Some of those fibers, a few come out, don't worry about it, pull them out. Stroke them all back. Fluff up your butt. And there is your prairie dog and pupa. And if you have a few pieces that are a little too long, I can just pull them out with my fingernails. It's not the end of the world. If you're wondering what I'm using here, I'm just using a pair of tweezers that I just stuck a piece of Velcro to. That way it has a little point to it. I can get in there pretty close to the fly and tease all those fibers out. There you go. That is the Prairie Dog and Caddis Pupa. Pretty easy to tie. Once you do four or five of them, uh, it's pretty easy to replicate that butt. This butt, if you tie a traditional La Fontaine's, it's really hard to get that thing to be perfectly even and proportional every time. Sometimes you put too much yarn on, sometimes you put too little, sometimes it twists on you. So really what I was trying to do is just find an easy way to get the bubble butt quickly um, and consistently, you know, get it to say get to be the same every single time. Um, and that is the prairie dog and pupa.